Welcome to Community Connect. My name is Dennis Threadgale. Here I have with me Joy Gash, President of the Chamber of Commerce. Welcome. I'm so glad to be with you this evening. Thanks for uh, being here, telling us a little bit about the Chamber. Um, so just what is the Chamber of Commerce? Well, the Chamber of Commerce is a business organization. Um, it is a membership-based organization. Um, we have members from all the economic sectors in the community. Uh, chambers date back to the 1500s, 1600s in Europe, mm -hmm. um, and the United States has kind of made its own. Uh, every chamber is different. Uh, there's a saying in the chamber world, if you've seen one chamber, you've seen one chamber. Uh, so we're all a little bit different, but we really all are about a strong economy in the communities that we serve. Which you say business, but in reality, if it's affecting the economy, it's really everybody is affected by the chamber, by what it brings to the economy. Certainly. I mean, when you think about, um, we're all stakeholders, mm -hmm. you know, everybody from from kids to seniors. Um, and it's really all about the quality of life that we have in our community. But that quality of life is contingent upon a strong economy. Sure. Uh, so we really have to, as an organization, our focus really is on a healthy business climate in the community and what do we need to do to maintain that? What do we need to do to make our community the most attractive place for people to live mm -hmm. with a full um, menu of services and options? Because when it's a great place to live, we can bring those people in there to uh, have businesses. Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about the history of, of our chamber. Our chamber started back in 1899. So we're um, I think moving up to um, 120 years um, mm -hmm. this year, we were originally called the Board of Trade. Uh, and back in the, in the late 1800s, um, there was a change going on in our community. The lumbering era was coming to an end. Uh, so this business group was formed to really go out and recruit new businesses to come into the community, new industry to replace the industry that we were leave, losing. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they, they started out as Board of Trade and were, uh, were successful in recruiting a number of large employers to our community mm -hmm. to transition from lumbering to the manufacturing era. Um, we still had fishing and we still had some lumbering, but um, you know, if you think about Story and Clark, you know, they were recruited here. They were brought here by the Board of Trade. The Board of Trade turned into the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and then throughout the years, there's continually been a Chamber of Commerce here, but there have been other entities that have been kind of a part of it or have supported it. Committee for Economic Development, when I came here in 2000, it was Association of Commerce and Industry that was an umbrella organization for economic development, the Chamber, the Visitors Bureau, um, training connections. Um, so it's morphed over the years and it's changed depending on what the needs of the community are. And that's the nice thing about an organization like ours that serves a smaller area. If we were a countywide chamber, we probably couldn't do what we do. But because we serve a small geographic area, we can house a number of activities and, and serve our governmental units and our businesses very well. Sure. And I know you have a lot of different programs inside the chamber. Um, one that's close to my heart is Lakeshore Youth Leadership Connect. So we're not just talking about businesses. I mean, we're talking about our future leaders as well. Can you tell me briefly about that? Yeah, absolutely. Briefly, maybe not. Maybe not. But um, <laughs> because it's a pretty important component mm -hmm. of, of what we do. Um, we have a, a economic development professional on staff and when we go out and meet with companies in our area, one of, one of the top items on their agenda when we meet with them is where are we going to get our employees for the future? Where, where are they going to come from? Are they going to have the skills that we need? Because we know that there's been kind of a change in, in the way that um, the educational system in the state and the federal government look at careers. Mm -hmm. uh, it, for a while it was everybody has to have a college degree. Today it's everyone by, and I've forgotten what year it is, needs to have a college degree or a technical certification. So it's kind of shifted and we're back looking at the trades as mm -hmm. a very, because we now are at a point where we really don't have people to fill those positions. Um, try and get a, a builder these days. Yeah. Um, car, people that work on cars are becoming fewer and fewer. Um, the uh, welders, CNC operators, I mean mm -hmm. the list goes on and on and on. So 
We made a conscientious decision a number of years ago that part of our role was to build leadership capacity for the future. Whether it was teaching people leadership skills as to how to be better in their job or working with kids to, um, and, and teachers to help build better business education partnerships. The Lakeshore Youth Leadership Connect program mm -hmm. came about as a discussion um, between a principal here in town uh, and um, our staff recognizing that a large percentage of our workforce comes from Muskegon, recognizing that there really wasn't a strong connection between the schools or even between the communities. Sure. Um, that was how Lakeshore Youth Leadership Connect was born. It was to bridge the gap mm -hmm. between Muskegon and Grand Haven and to help the kids begin to understand that really we're all the same. Yeah. And I yeah. hear that, I interview the kids and they're like, yeah, they go to a different school, but we're all the same. We all yeah. have the same problems. We all like the same things. Yes. So it's just, you know, and they're finding that connection that there is no difference. There is no it's, difference. It's and they also they learn that stereotyping mm -hmm. um, what a community or what people are like really doesn't help you understand that that you are very much the same. You may have a series of different problems, sure. but you're pretty much all the same. And, and those stereotypes are being broken down yes. and, and they're realizing that yeah. they're just stereotypes. That yeah, it's a phenomenal kind of it's yeah. a phenomenal program and we've you know, we've had such great support from mm -hmm. the community um, because it's a challenge to try and run a sure. program between two different school systems. Mm -hmm. With and all the snow days and everything absolute, that goes along absolutely absolutely so you know that's really that's a huge component but the other one that's really really great is homegrown mm -hmm. um, homegrown is a new program that was just la launched this past year with the elementary kids okay. and it really is exposing them to what kind of job opportunities there are available in our community uh, in in companies and and it's all levels of types of jobs that okay. manufacturing isn't just being on the manufacturing floor you know you can be a salesperson you can work in accounting you can do marketing wow. so these little kids mm -hmm. are are having an opportunity to meet with the the CEOs the presidents the general managers of companies and actually the companies give them a problem to solve and wow. the little kids solve the problem so first second third graders are 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 changing changing the conversation uh -huh. when it they comes they don't know their limitations exactly. so they don't have a problem thinking outside of the box because exactly. they don't know any different and they've come up with some amazing solutions wow. so our second cohort of that will start um, but you know all of these things happen because we have a community that really is passionate about education, but it's also passionate about making sure that we have the tools in our community for our businesses to be successful. Yep. So we, we hit yeah. at, we, you know, th that, that whole leadership piece is just really critical. The other one is Boomerang, mm -hmm. um, which is done at, at the high school uh, where it brings 30 to 40 businesses in to meet with high school juniors. And just explain quickly what the boomerang analogy is. Well, boomerang, boomerang was a result of one of our leadership connect classes ideas for a community project. Um, they said, you know, gee, you know, we need to bring, we need to have more, more people that, mm -hmm. that work in our manufacturing firms and our businesses here. Why don't we do something to kind of educate the kids that, you know, go away, get your degree, go in the service, go, go do what you're going to do. But there are all kinds of jobs for you to come back sure. to here. It's, Boomerang. It's not a Frisbee. It's, it's going to come a, back to you. It's absolutely Perfect. correct. So, so that was where Boomerang was born. So that was, you know, that, those are really important um, activities that we're undertaking to really create that future workforce and future residents mm -hmm. in our community. Great. So lastly, um, how does a business get involved if, you know, they, they've heard about all this and what you guys are doing, the impact that you're having in the community? Well, we're really easy to find. Um, they All they have to do is call us, go to our website, which is www.grandhavenchamber.org. Mm -hmm. um, you can look at all of our programs online. 
you can sign up uh, to become a member online. Uh, if you want to explore uh, one of our events, um, you're welcome to come as a guest. Uh, we have an early bird breakfast. Mm -hmm. It's a networking event. We have business after hours, which are a networking event, but it's more fun and relaxed. The early bird breakfast is two minute updates on everything that's going on okay. in the community. So um, give us a call. Come down and visit us. Great. One South Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to find. Easy yeah. to find. Easy Great. to find. Well, thank you so much. We're out of time. Uh, thanks for being here and telling us a little bit about the chamber. Absolutely. Right. Thanks thank for you. having me. Thanks. thanks, guys, for watching Community Connect. We'll see you next time. Quality and craftsmanship are at the heart of every suite we craft, guaranteeing each tempting treat delights the taste buds and gratifies the soul. Sweet Temptations, homemade indulgences that instantly delight and ignite your senses. So whether you need an exceptional gift for someone special or just want to treat yourself, step into Sweet Temptations today and experience the taste of pure bliss. 621 Miller Drive in Grand Haven or at sweet-temptations.com.